You're listening to Superpowers of the Soul on the Superpower Up Podcast, the show that elevates superpowers to the divine. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Jennifer Uziel, founder and spiritual director of Soul Language, and this is Superpowers of the Soul. I'm a superpower expert, and I'm so excited that we're going to talk to Nikki Ganjemi today. And what we're talking about is having the courage to leap into success. Welcome, Nikki. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm so excited to be here. I know. It's a good way to start. It's Monday morning. By the time everyone listens to this, who knows what it will be, but today it's Monday morning. And I want to talk to you about what you consider the superpower of your soul. And when I talk about superpowers, what I really mean here is the superpower for your soul for you. I think so often, you know, people are asked this question and there's such this desire as master healers to go outside of ourselves to answer that question. But I really want to know what you consider the superpower of your soul for yourself. That is a great question. And this is the first time I'm being asked this. So kudos to you for your creativity, <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> I Yay, love it. Jen! Ah! <laughs> but the first thing that comes to mind when you're asking me what my superpower is for me, I have to say that it's really going within, inside of me, because for so many years I was looking for other people to let me know that I was good enough and that I was worthy. And it was just never enough. I never felt fulfilled. There was not one person in the world that could fill me up and make me feel good. So I saw that I started wearing people out eventually because they just couldn't do that for me. So it took me a long time to learn that I have everything that I need inside of me. And once I'm willing to sit with myself and just be still and be quiet, all of that that I was looking for, there was a well of it inside all along. And that's what I love helping others realize. That's really an amazing superpower. And I think that we all have Thank the you. potential. You're welcome. We all have the potential to kind of activate that superpower. But what you said something extremely like, whoa, in a good way, was I was wearing people out. And I think so often, you know, when we're searching outside of ourselves to fill that hole, it's totally never going to be filled. And, you know, I think when we do that, we are also kind of uh, intermingling with people who are sharing in the not enough, right? So now you have two not enough people. One is trying to fill the hole. One is trying to get the hole filled and none, no one's going to be satisfied. And so again, it turns out into this big not enough moment and you have to kind of let that person go or move on or there tends to be some discord. So what you said was extremely powerful. And, and I think it's a really good awareness to, for people to check in and go, oh, am I wearing people out? Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, you're wearing people out because you're wearing yourself out. So really amazing answer. Thank you so much, Nikki. You're welcome. Thank you for asking the question. I love that question. <laughs> it's my new favorite question. <laughs> <laughs> So we talk a lot about sacred purpose and sacred uh, work, and and I think sometimes people uh, intermix the sacred purpose and the sacred work. You know, our sacred purpose is what we are profoundly here to experience and then offer that experience to others. And I think so often we're looking for that doing, that delivery system to prove that we're worthy or we're being our sacred purpose. And so again, you're going to wear yourself out. Uh, to use Nikki's language. So what do you consider your sacred purpose? And then how does that purpose kind of show up in areas of your life? I think my sacred purpose is like a little bit of a repeat of what I said. It's to help people just realize that they matter and that they're good enough as is. That was such a huge lesson for me uh, my whole life, well into my 30s. It was something that took me a really long time to learn. Um, but I remember I was, um, I was always very much you know, in the spiritual growth and personal development um, 
work. And I remember doing Oprah and Deepak, you know, they have those 21 day meditations. And I was like such an avid, you know, listener of that. And I remember, you know, it was Deepak Chopra in those guided meditations that really helped me to find that sacred space within. I didn't even know that it existed. So I feel like my purpose is to help people slow down, to get off of autopilot, how it's almost like robotic. You're just going about your day, going, 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 you know, wishing the days away. Can't wait for Friday, Sunday comes and it's like, oh God, I go back to work on Monday. And it's like, why are we rushing our life away? Why are we waiting for permission to be happy and be excited to wake up every day? Just tune in, go within, listen to yourself and always know that you matter. And I think the bottom line is people, what we really want, the commonality we all share is we just want to know that we're being heard. And we want to know that we matter. And that was kind of the, the birth of my, my business name, Mindful Matters. Yeah. I, again, you know, I think so often um, you said a lot of really kind of amazing things there. You know, I think that people need to start looking at their themes of their life because when we're on autopilot, we're just on our kind of pattern and on our theme and just pause and go, okay, what are the big themes that keep showing up in my life? What's the same circumstance that I keeps or experience that keeps happening again and again and again? And that's going to tell you a lot about what you get to transform and where you get to move. And, you know, I think, People under, have to understand the three kind of levels of what happens in transformation, right? There's the information gathering stage. There's the perception phase where you're starting to change your perception. And then there's the transformation where there's an embodiment. And I think that the more that you kind of are aware of your patterns, not to judge yourself, but to pause and go, okay, wait, there's that pattern again. And I think that you know, patterns can get really sneaky. And sometimes mm. you're not enough is coming up because you're in a pattern that you weren't even aware of until your consciousness level grows. And they're like, oh, that's the sneaky way that not enough or control issues happen. Yeah, it just comes up. And then a lot of it, you know, you just like you talk about pattern, you realize that is it that I'm not good enough? Or is it that I have ha a habit of thinking that I'm not good enough. And just that little switch for me, that it's not me, I can remove myself, take me out of the equation and just see it as a pattern programming in my, in my brain that it's just a habit. It's like, oh, wow, now I can just get curious. And I love stepping into that curiosity. Beautiful. And questioning all this. Yeah. I love that. So before we do our break here, give out your website again. I'm sorry, give out your website, let people know how to get in touch with you to learn more goodness of what you do and who you are. Sure. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, my website is mindfulmattersliving.com. Beautiful. Okay, everyone, stay tuned. We'll be back talking more uh, with Nikki about having the courage to leap into success. Hello, everyone. This is Tonya Don Reckla, Executive Director of Superpower Experts. And we want to thank each of you for making Superpower Up the number one podcast network for personal development and spiritual growth. Because people like you have the courage to say that mindfulness, healthy living, disrupting reality, the pursuit of consciousness, responsible entrepreneurship, and radical parenting matter. We now amass over 1 million downloads monthly in more than 90 countries. Our numbers keep growing because there are far more people willing to live divergently than mass media wants to acknowledge. For you, the change makers, the light bearers, the way showers, we say thank you. If you're ready to take the next step in your evolution, go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz. And as Neva Lee Rekla, our youngest podcaster, likes to remind us, remember, we all have superpowers and we can change the world. Welcome back, everyone. It's Jennifer Rizzio from Superpowers of the Soul. And we're talking with Nikki um, Ganjemi. And we're talking today about having the courage to leap into success. So why does success, the big sigh, everyone, because I think that people don't realize <laughs> how much courage success takes. Yes. And yeah, so tell me a little bit about that. I mean, this is a very big topic, everyone, and we can talk about hours about it. But why does courage, why do we have to have this influx of courage to really be successful, to create success and to embody success? 
Yeah. So I, the reason why I think you need to have courage to take this kind of a leap into success. And first of all, it's what is your definition of success? Because we all have different definitions and also, um, understanding is success something that you are inviting into your life and that you want to embody or is there any fear around success so that was something i had to get clear on at first because when i did tune in and go inside i realized there were some fears around being successful and all the responsibility that you know does come along with it so it's kind of like you take the actions to move forward but then you're working against yourself because deep down inside at a subconscious level you really are afraid afraid of success. So you push it away. So first it was getting clear on that. And then having the courage to be willing to see your reality. See, we tend to make decisions from what we see right now in our life. And this is why we don't move forward because we can't see beyond that. So we just take a bunch of action steps and then just kind of end up stuck or creating the same thing like a vicious cycle over and over again. So having the courage to being willing to see your life the way you want it to be and believing that it can be that way before you actually have evidence of seeing it. And that can take a lot of courage. The second thing that takes a lot of courage is to be 100% responsible because it's so easy for us to slip into, well, I'm in this job that I hate because of my circumstances. It's, you know, the beliefs that I have from growing up. I grew up, you know, in a middle class, blue collar worker and, you know, family. And this is why, or I have bills to pay. I've got family to take care of. And we just point the finger. And, and in doing that, we end up losing our power. It's really disempowering. So having the courage to face yourself, look in the mirror and realize that perhaps you have gotten in your own way, which yeah. is a huge pill to swallow, right, Jennifer? Yeah. And, and I want to talk about responsibility for a second, because I think, you know, part of that fear of success is, you know, there's, I, I define responsibility as about how you're going to respond. And I think so many master healers and people with a big spiritual message, they think responsibility is this codependent about what you're going to be responsible or who you're going to be responsible for. And it's really not. And when you just decide that, okay, how my responsibility is how I'm going to respond to my experience, there's a big sense of freedom with that. Mm -hmm. And right? You know, and, and it's really about going, okay, so <clears throat> how am I defining what this means? And is that really truth? Or is that based on family beliefs or experience or experience, painful experiences, really? Mm, yeah. And, and that was one of the, I have to say, one of the scariest things was when I asked myself, what if everything that I have believed in all these years was a lie? And, and that was like, oh my God, to think, you know, am I here because um, of what, like I said, putting the, you know, placing the blame, what other people did and, and I'm a product of my, you know, growing up in circumstances or is this because of me and I put myself here? Yeah. And, you know, it's also about not, you know, I think it takes some courage to let things go, meaning not to kind of harp or continue to try to, you know, change something rather than just accept it. And once we are in acceptance, right, then things can shift. So Jennifer Bloom, who's been on the show and is a soul language practitioner, often says, be in the consciousness of the solution, right? Yes. Right. And stop yeah. the pre-suffering. So I think a lot of patterns create a lot of pre-suffering. So you have to have courage to move through your pre-suffering. You do. Yeah. And, and just, um, being willing to feel. So I know that we don't want to stay there. We don't want to stay in blame because it's really like a, a low vibration and we're not going to create anything from that space, but allowing yourself to feel. So if there's any kind of disappointment or hurt or anger, just really sitting with it. Um, I always say, I think it was Dr. Jill Bolte Taylor that says it takes 90 seconds for yourself to move through an emotion so that if you're holding on to the disappointment or anger for any longer, it's just because you're stuck in the story. So I have found great healing when I just allowed myself to sit, <laughs> allowed myself to cry, have a box of tissues and just release, release and then replace, you know, what's the new story? What do you want from here moving forward? And then just making that, you know, practicing so it becomes your new normal. 
Yeah. And I think people don't sit in that emotion because there's all that stored up emotion that they feel like it's going to be a forest fire and they're never going to come back from it. And, and that's just another lie we, we yeah. tell ourselves, right? So the courage to actually be emotional, authentic uh, is key to success. And what I've noticed, and tell me if this is the same to you, um, I think one of the keys to success is having those conversations that we just don't like to have. Yes, that's what I mean. A lot of people, I, I notice, and myself included, when we don't want to feel, we just go into doing. It's like we get busy. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, you know, I'm checking my emails, and I'm doing this, and I'm all over the place. And, and it's a lot of times, it's like you're, you're running away from your emotion because we don't want to feel them. But if you think about it, emotions, it's just energy in motion. It's just energy, really. That's all it is. And yet, we, we don't want to feel. But it's like if you could just take two minutes, that's it, two minutes to just sit there and just feel it and just breathe through it you're going to be okay. And then every time you realize that you survive, you're like, oh my God, I survived that. I'm okay. I'm still standing. You come out a little bit stronger. Yeah. And I think once you reduce those patterns, then you have those conversations that you might avoid because you're not, you know, I'm a really good storyteller and I'm a great storyteller in my head. And so often when I noticed a disconnect or a disharmony, it's only really happening in my head. It's not happening, you know, in the other person's experience. So having those difficult conversations and really understand the emotional place that you're coming from and is really powerful because then you can, you become this unstoppable freight train because you're not dragging all of your past experiences with you into your new yeah. creations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what you want to let go of those because that's just weight and it takes up space quite honestly and then it, you, you don't have the space to allow new and the things that you want into your life. So I also find that getting what's in your head onto paper, I'm an avid um, journaler, if that's a word, maybe I'm making up words right now, but I journal every day. And it's just something about getting those thoughts that are in your mind. You know, on average, we have 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. It's just so much. And if we can take those thoughts that begin as soon as we open up our eyes in the morning and just kind of do a brain dump and get it down on paper, for me, that has helped um, me to just feel better and also notice and you could go back and you can read you know are there are any patterns that are coming up so you could see what is consistently on your mind and you know getting in your way so you could release it move forward beautiful so as I wrap up here with my last question before I do give out your website address again yes it's uh, www.mindfulmattersliving.com Beautiful. So my last question is, if you were a magnet on whatever you call your higher powers refrigerator, what would your magnet say? Oh, and I have a magnet on my refrigerator. And it's something that I so it's so funny that you asked me that it's proceed as if success is inevitable. And I don't know whose quote it is. But that's exactly what I'm doing. It's what I did when I quit my nine to five, I quit before I was ready. And um, that's how I'm rolling. I'm proceeding as if success is inevitable. Yeah. And technically, you would never be ready, right? I mean, what right, is that? Right. We're always getting ready to be ready. <laughs> right? Like, what is that? Like, it's like being ready to be pregnant or being ready to be in a relationship. It, you know, we can only be ready for the beginning of the race of all of those things because the moment that we say yes, the ball game changes. I'm mixing metaphors, by the way, but yeah. you know, everything changes and you don't know, you know, you have to be ready with being, having courage and feeling safe in the unknown. Absolutely. And that confidence comes from action. It doesn't come from thinking about it. Uh, it. That just makes things worse when you sit there and think because everything gets stacked upon each other. So take action, small steps. The confidence comes through action. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us today. You're welcome, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. This was fun. Flew by. <laughs> yeah, it normally does. And talking about one of my favorite, uh, two of my favorite subjects, actually, courage and success. So thank you uh, for playing with us today. And everyone, if you liked what you heard, you can connect with me and all the other experts in the Superpower Net at superpowerexperts.com forward slash the net. Uh, and please feel free to share this episode with anyone who you think might get a kick out of it. And don't forget to write a re review. 
Thank you, everyone, and have an amazing day. Don't forget not just to find your connection, but to be your connection. Are you ready to discover your superpowers? Go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz today.